Hello students, this is again Samson Deepak from the Temple of Excellence Vidyashram Pre University College. In my today's session, we will understand how to calculate the strength of electric field by considering a point on the axial line of a dipole and equatorial line of an electric dipole. Now, just to recall things that we have done in our previous class, we studied the definition of electric dipole where we told it is a pair of equal and opposite charges which are separated by a small distance and very importantly the crew of my today's discussion the definition of electric dipole moment where we told it is the product of magnitude of any one of the charge and the distance of separation which was the dipole length. So we told dipole moment is always Q into 2L. Now my first topic of discussion today, I will derive an expression for electric intensity at a point on the axial line of the electric dipole. So what am I doing? I will consider an electric dipole plus Q and minus Q. Draw an axis, a straight line that will join the two charges, axial line. Consider a point on that axial line and calculate electric intensity at that point. Very simple. And all the more, this is a very important three mark derivation that is asked in the examination axial line. My dear friends, just recalling the expression for electric intensity due to a point charge, we derived electric intensity is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught charge divided by distance square. So in my previous class, I have done this book work, intensity due to a point charge E equals 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught Q divided by R square, charge divided by distance square. Using that expression, we will start deriving our equation. Now, my dear friends, I will consider two points in free space. Point A and point B. Two points in free space. First point A and second point B. What is placed at the point A? My charge minus Q. What is placed at the point B? My charge plus Q. Dipole be kalvanam ye. Electric dipole minus Q nu irbeko plus Q nu irbeko. So at the point A, I have 
चार्ज माइनस क्यू एट द पॉइंट बी आई हैव चार्ज प्लस क्यू नो फॉलो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट आई एम कॉलिंग ओ एज द जियोमेट्रिकल सेंटर ऑफ द डाइपोल गमन सी बरी सेंटर अंत करी I am calling O as geometrical center. O is referred as the geometrical center of the dipole. What is this geometrical center? In simple terms, the exact center of the dipole, the exact center of the system. is called as the geometrical center so here afterwards please keep in mind the word geometrical center it is the exact center so o is the exact center of the system now the distance from minus q to o is l i call this l as the distance between the charge minus q and the point o then what is the distance between o and plus q it also has to be l because o is the geometrical center and therefore as i told in my previous session 2l becomes the distance between the two charges nevo nenap maadkondre previous session alli dipole length na distance between the charges na 2l anta karidvi why this is the reason l from minus q to o l from plus q to o therefore 2l is the distance between the two charges so my preliminary assumptions are very simple what is placed at a minus q what is placed at b plus q what is o geometrical center what is 2l distance between the two charges now what should i do i should consider a point on the axis of the dipole and calculate intensity at that point what was axis straight line joining the two charges therefore i consider a point p on the axis of the dipole p is the axial point p is a point on the axis now my dear students i am calculating the electric intensity at the point p so at the point p how do i test the intensity i place the test charge and what did i consider as the test charge upc so at this point where i am calculating the intensity i place a upc a charge of plus 1 coulomb and the distance between the upc and the geometrical center is r very simple elli electric intensity na calculate martidini it is at the point p so yen in place martidini upc upc is placed at the point p what is its distance from the geometrical center it is r so this is all what i have fundamentally taken to be as an assertion now going to the mathematical derivation 
the first part of the derivation i will calculate intensity at p due to the charge plus q intensity at the point p where due to the charge plus q intensity at p because of this charge plus q now how do i do that i know the expression for intensity it is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught charge divided by distance square so e plus just to realize it is the intensity due to the positive charge intensity due to the charge plus q what is the expression 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught which is the source charge plus q divided by the distance between the source charge and the test charge that is b p square i repeat 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught plus q source charge divided by distance square so distance square is bp square and what is the direction of intensity as clearly told intensity or force both of them are positive charges plus q and upc that means force has to act away from the charge experiencing it which is the charge experiencing the force upc therefore it acts away which is along the positive x axis now what is this bp equal to it is nothing but the distance r minus this distance l therefore bp square is nothing but r minus l square expressing it in vector form i cap so what is the intensity at p due to plus q it is vector e plus equals 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught plus q divided by distance square which is r minus l square into i cap and i call this equation one what do i do in the next step similarly i will calculate the intensity at p due to the charge minus q again e at p due to the charge minus q as i did above now e minus just to denote it is due to minus q 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught now charges minus q divided by distance what is the distance now now the distance is a p square and what should be the direction very clearly i told here is a negative charge here is a positive charge what was the direction of field lines from positive to negative you remember field lines starts from positive charge and terminates on negative charge so it should start from positive go towards negative so it is acting along negative x-axis direction and what is this AP equal to? It is nothing but R plus L whole square I cap. So E plus is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught R plus L whole square 
into eye cap. Therefore, now if you observe, I calculated intensity at P first due to plus Q charge and then due to minus Q. But that was not my assertion. What is the thing I had to do? I have to calculate electric intensity due to the dipole which is plus Q as well as minus Q due to the system is what I have to calculate the electric intensity. So how do I do that? As before, I will be using something called as the superposition principle. Now from the superposition principle, the net electric intensity, the total electric intensity at P is E plus plus E minus. Follow. I am using the superposition principle where I will be calculating the total intensity at P. How did I calculate the total intensity at P? E equals E plus plus E minus. Now I substitute for E plus and E minus. What is E plus from equation 1? It was 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught plus Q divided by R minus L whole square equation 1. And what was E minus because of the negative charge? 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught minus Q divided by R plus L whole square in vector forms. So, E plus 6 substitute mark this is my E plus and this is my E minus whatever I computed from my equation 1 and equation 2. How can I simplify my equation further? Munda yao riti simplify marko bahudo. I will take out the terms which are common on both expressions. Which are the terms which are common? 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught there. Here also 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. So I have taken out 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. I have a Q here. Again a Q in the numerator which is common. So it is Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught. In mark 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. Yard kade in lo common take the dini. Numerator linear common is there. There is something called Q which is common in the numerator. Now, so therefore the term outside the bracket becomes Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught. What remains here? 1 divided by R minus L whole square. Il minus Q is there. So this is minus 1 divided by R plus whole square with an I cap also common. What remains inside the bracket? 1 divided by R minus L whole square minus 1 divided by R plus L whole square I cap. Now, further simplification says Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught keep as it is outside the bracket. Now, cross multiply the terms. R plus L whole square 
minus R minus L whole square. Cross multiply mark for R plus L whole square minus R minus L whole square. When you simplify the denominator, A minus P whole square into A plus P whole square. A square minus B square the whole square. So it is R square minus L square the whole square with an I cap. I repeat, what am I doing? I am just cross multiplying the terms. So what do I get when I cross multiply? R plus L whole square minus R minus L whole square divided by R square minus L square the whole square into I cap or again Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught. Expand the first term it is of the form A plus B whole square R square plus L square plus 2RL, A plus B whole square, A square plus B square plus 2AB minus A minus B whole square, R minus L whole square, R square minus L square plus 2RL. So using the identity A plus B whole square and A minus B whole square, I have expanded the terms. Now on simplification, plus R square minus R square cancels, plus L square minus L square cancels, plus L square, this is minus. So A square plus B square minus 2AB, so minus into minus is plus, so 2RL plus 2RL is 4RL, I repeat. This is plus R square minus R square cancels, plus L square minus L square cancels, plus 2RL minus 2RL is 4RL divided by R square minus L square the whole square. Now if you understand electric intensity is of the form standard form 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into something. So this 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught, kindly understand 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught, I take out and push Q inside the bracket. 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught na bracket in the hora yirtini akandre intensity in standard form 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into something. So I push Q inside, so it becomes Q into 4 R L. All this with unit vector I cap. Now Factorize this Q into 2RL. 2R I take out common. So which becomes Q into 2L. On factorizing, 2R is taken out. Q into 2L I cap divided by R square minus L square the whole square. My dear students, a very important expression here. If you are following the terms inside the bracket, Q into 2L. What was Q into 2L? Charge into distance. That is what we call P, where P was called the dipole moment. I gave you the definition for dipole moment. Product of the charge into the dipole length. So this is 2R. Now Q into 2L is P. P with an I cap. Dipole moment was a vector. So we have vector E intensity is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught 2RP divided by R square minus L square the whole square. 
Now, if you go back to the diagram, very clearly, the distance between the geometrical center and the UPC is greater than L. R was very, very greater than L, which means R square is greater than L square. So I am neglecting it. So neglecting L square, 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught, 2 RP, this becomes R to the power 4. L square to the whole square is neglected. R and R gets cancelled. So E is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not 2P by R cube. And this is the expression for electric intensity at any point on the axial line of the dipole. E equals 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. 2p divided by r cube. Now I want to follow the conclusions here. On the axial line, if you follow, E is directly proportional to the dipole moment. The strength of the electric field on the axial line Field strength is maximum if the dipole moment is maximum E directly proportional to P. And the same E is inversely proportional to the cube of the distance as the distance between the UPC and the charge that is geometrical center decreases, interaction is maximum. So E directly proportional to dipole moment and the same intensity inversely proportional to what is called as R cube, cube of the distance. So very clearly I can also say E is proportional to two types the dipole moment. Now in the previous book work, I have calculated the electric field at a point on the axial line of the dipole. Now on the same grounds, I'll give you all a small assignment that is to calculate the electric field at a point on something called as equatorial line of the dipole. I want you all to do this assignment, but once I finish the applications of Gauss law, I'll take it back again, but until then, I expect you all to do this as an assignment. Same as we did the axial line, you have to calculate the electric intensity at a point on the equatorial line of the dipole. Now, going to the Next concept, again a very important one, torque acting on a dipole in a uniform electric field. I repeat, torque acting on a dipole in a uniform electric field. So my first question here, is to understand what is a uniform electric field. Electric field na yawaga uniform anta consider maarthi vi. Matte yawaga non-uniform anta consider maarthi vi. When do we consider the electric field as uniform electric field? And when do we consider the electric field as a non-uniform electric field? 
Now I'll consider IUPAC. We told the space surrounding the UPC was called electric field. Adre electric field yen maadbe kaagutte. When do you call the space as electric field? Only when it exerts electric force on the UPC. Alva, yavaga electric field UPC mele force in exert maadu te. Aga dun field in kariti vi. Now, if this charge, follow carefully, if this charge experiences the same magnitude of force, same magnitude at any point inside the electric field, a charge in the electric field will again, point no same magnitude of force exert adre only then you call it is a uniform electric field andre suppose at this point 5 newton force is acting suppose at this point 5 newton force is acting suppose at this point 5 newton force is acting so wherever you keep the electric charge within the field same magnitude of force is acting on it we call the field to be uniform else non-uniform andre at every point if the charge experiences different magnitude of force the force acting on it changes with magnitude then you call that as a non-uniform electric field. So what is uniform electric field? Any point of the field, same force should act on the charge. On the other hand, at different points, different forces are acting. Magnitude of force changes. That is what we call as non-uniform electric field. Now, in today's session here, I am calculating torque acting on an electric dipole which is placed in a uniform electric field. Now, the moment I say torque, what is the picture you get? How do you analyze the torque? Torque andre no. Basically, the word torque refers to some type of rotation. And here therefore, I mean, we are talking about the rotation of the electric field or rotation of the dipole in the electric field. Fine. I consider an electric dipole. Again, dipole and re minus q nu irbeko plus q nu irbeko. I consider an electric dipole minus q and plus q. Where is this minus Q placed? Point A. Where is this plus Q placed? Point B. Simple. I have an electric dipole, which means the charge minus Q is placed at the point A and the charge plus Q is placed at the point B and this dipole is placed in a uniform electric field. Yavaga electric field uniform agirte, yavaga electric field non-uniform agirte. 
and the distance of separation again between the two charges is 2L. So, minus Q placed at the point A plus Q placed at the point B and the dipole is placed in uniform electric field. What is the dipole length separation between the two charges? That is what I am calling as 2L. Now, the dipole moment theta very clearly says the dipole moment P makes an angle theta with the uniform electric field. So, what should be the direction of the dipole moment? Clearly, I have told dipole moment is directed from negative to the positive charge. What is the dipole moment doing here? It is making an angle theta with the direction of the electric field. So, what is theta? Angle made by the dipole moment with the direction of the electric field. Now, my dear students, what will this electric field do? It will exert some electric force on the dipole. What is the force acting on minus Q? What did I call that force as? Electric intensity. And basically we knew electric intensity is equal to F divided by Q. Basic expression. Electric intensity is the force acting on the charge. So E equals F divided by Q. So what is the force acting on the charge? F is always E into Q. Please to remember, force acting on a charge in the electric field, F equals E into Q. So what is the force acting on the negative charge? F equals minus Q into E. Generally by the expression, F equals minus Q into E. And what is the force acting on the positive charge? F equals plus Q into E. Again by this relation, force acting on the negative charge F equals minus Q into E against the direction of the field. Force acting on the positive charge F equals Q into E in the direction of the field. So what is the net force acting on the system? One is minus Q into E, other one is plus Q into E. They cancel each other and the net force acting will be zero. So what is the net force acting? Net force acting is zero. But my dear students, if you observe here, there are two forces of the same magnitude. Either magnitude Q E, force acting on plus Q is also Q E. There are two forces of the same magnitude, but which are acting in the opposite direction. What do you call such forces as? Such forces we always call as couple rigid body dynamics. What is a couple? Two forces of the same magnitude acting in opposite directions. Minus QE plus QE. 
they have the same magnitude but they are acting in opposite direction they constitute a couple and what does the couple do the couple will always rotate the system so from where is this electric dipole experiencing rotation it is because of this couple and this rotation is what is influencing torque on this electric dipole so going the other way from where is the electric dipole getting torque it is basically due to the rotation who is rotating the dipole it is the couple acting on the dipole what is a couple it is two forces of the same magnitude but acting in opposite directions so please to understand one force is minus qe the other force is plus qe same magnitude q and e but acting in opposite direction what do they constitute couple equal magnitude forces acting in opposite direction couple pair couple influences rotation and that rotation is what is called as torque now i have to calculate the torque you know the basic definition of torque it is the product of magnitude of the force into perpendicular distance between the charges basically force into perpendicular distance in baritidri torque na ill enagutte torque is the product of the magnitude of the force and perpendicular distance between the charges what was the magnitude of the force minus q idaglo q into e plus q idaglo q into e so q e into in the diagram what was the perpendicular distance between the two charges it was b c so very clearly you told this was the electric field here i had minus q here i had plus q so you call this at the point a this was the point b this is the perpendicular distance with b c what was 2l that was the dipole length distance between the two charges so it is the perpendicular distance this perpendicular distance between the two charges and somewhere we call this theta now i need to calculate this bc i have a theta where i have to use one of the trigonometric definitions i have a triangle abc in order to calculate bc i have to use the definition of sin theta opposite by hypotenuse what is opposite bc hypotenuse is ab why don't i use cos if i am using cos it is ac by ab then i don't get bc that is why i use sin theta which is opposite side by hypotenuse opposite side is bc divided by hypotenuse is ab or bc is ab sin theta now therefore torque is substituting for bc qe into ab sin theta now this ab is nothing but 2l so this can also be written as 
BC is 2L sin theta because AB dipole length. So this is 2L sin theta. Again in standard form, Q into 2L I take outside. What remains E sin theta? Q into 2L E sin theta. What is this Q into 2L? Again dipole moment, standard expression. So this Q into 2L is nothing but P E sin theta. So general form of torque acting on the dipole is P E sin theta. Product of dipole moment, electric field, and angle, sign of the angle between the dipole moment and electric field. So coming back here again, so BC was 2L sin theta, substituting here QE into 2L sin theta, Q into 2L I take separate, it is of standard for E sin theta, Q into 2L is nothing but vector P, so it is P E sin theta. So in general, how do we define torque? Product of the dipole moment, electric field into sin theta. So my vector form says vector tau equals vector P cross vector E. Why that cross product? Sin theta. We have studied vector A cross vector B is AB sin theta. So wherever you have sin theta, we go for cross product. So we write vector tau equals vector P cross vector A. Now this is asked for two marks. Conditions where the torque acting on the dipole becomes minimum and maximum. When is the torque acting on a dipole in a uniform electric field minimum? You know, tau is P is sin theta. Minimum means I am asking when does tau become equal to zero? When is the torque acting on the dipole becoming zero? It means when theta is equal to zero, tau becomes zero. Why? We know when theta is equal to zero degrees, sin theta, sin zero is zero. What if P and E is zero? No. Always understand when we have vector A cross vector B, this is actually defined as magnitude of vector A, magnitude of vector B sin theta, which is AB sin theta. So A and B are defined values. Magnitude of vector A, magnitude of vector B, and they cannot be zero. They are magnitude values. Similarly here, magnitude of P, definite dipole moment. Magnitude of E, definite dipole moment. P and E cannot be zero. The only option is sin theta has to be zero. When is sin theta zero? When theta is zero. That is the mathematical meaning. But physically what do I understand? If theta is zero, P and E have to be parallel to each other. The dipole moment should be in the direction of the electric field. They have to be parallel and this is what is called stable equilibrium. One more question, Kerbodo. When is electric dipole said to be in stable equilibrium? 
when theta is zero. What do you mean by theta being zero? Dipole moment and electric field are in the same direction, parallel to each other. Any other condition when torque can become zero, again when theta is 180 degrees, again when theta is 180 degrees, sine 180 is zero, which means tau is zero. That means P and E are in opposite directions, anti-parallel. And now you say it is in unstable equilibrium. When do you say it is in stable equilibrium? If the dipole moment is in the same direction of electric field, stable equilibrium, and torque acting on the dipole is zero. If they are in opposite directions, anti-parallel, unstable equilibrium, which means, again, torque acting is zero. When does maximum torque act on the dipole? Again, for maximum torque, sin theta has to take up maximum value, which is one, sin theta. When is sin theta being one? When theta is 90 degrees which means sin theta is 1, so maximum torque is P into E. And this happens only when the dipole moment is perpendicular to electric field, theta becoming 90 degrees. So parallel or anti-parallel, zero torque. 90 degrees perpendicular, maximum torque acts on the dipole. And the SI unit for torque is Newton meter. My dear students, hope you have understood things that is done in today's class. Please to go through these concepts. They are conceptual. You need to understand them better and better. Again, the assignment, equatorial line. You don't get that, no problem. After God's law, we will take it up. But do try. Focus. Stay safe. Thank you.